Well, Keith, it was a really entertaining game and perhaps Nottingham Forest are surprising a lot of people, not just by their performances, but by their willingness to get forward and attack. Yeah, you know, Tottenham coming to town today, you could be forgiven for sitting back and maybe trying to soak up a little bit of pressure and hit them, hit Spores on the counter-attack with the likes of Lingard. They did a lot of pace in the team as well, but they went down and they threw punch for punch with Spores, which I really, really enjoyed. It, it was really refreshing. It was like a, a game back in the 90s where the ball dropped and you, you just, right, we're going to try and score a goal. There was no, let's try and uh, have possession, turn a screw here. It was great, really, really good football. And I'm still trying to figure out how they came out 2-0 uh, uh, losers at the end of it because I think Steve Cooper now will be in the dressing room telling these lads that we need more of that. You won't play Spurs every week. We won't. We will play teams that won't be as clinical as that. So if we keep getting chances and keep putting quality into the box, eventually we will hit the back of the net. Yeah, we saw already this season that they were well able to mix it with Everton. Well able to mix it with West Ham. Perhaps unlucky not to get the win at Everton last week against West Ham as well. They mix it again today with Tottenham Hotspur. So they they look like a side who can definitely compete at this level. And when you think about the fact as well that they've only or they've signed 16 players, they've only played a handful of games together, surely that gives you a good indication that they will get better and better as the season goes on. Yeah, exactly. Look, 16 new signings is going to take a while to gel for anybody. So if if that today is the baseline and it's going to get better and better as the season goes on you know Forrest are in for a decent decent season and let's not take our eye off the ball I know they've, they've big big spenders this this season and they brought 16 players into the club but success for Forrest is to stay in the league it's as simple as that you know if they finish you know one place above the relegation zone that's all Steve uh, Steve Cooper wants and they look capable of it like we look at you know Liverpool and Bournemouth totally different teams but it's a top team playing a newly promoted team that ended up 9-0 and Bournemouth got absolutely blew away they'll have no confidence going into the next game but I know Forrest lost 2-0 but I think Steve Cooper would be showing a lot of clips on Monday morning saying lads we get into this position we just have to be a little bit more clinical a little bit more quality just polish up a few things because like I say the, the tools are there the structure is there for them to stay in the league so what do you think was the problem when they get into the final third? Because I'm not sure if you'd say they create a lot of clear-cut chances, but they got into the right area. So what could you see that they need to start working on over the next couple of weeks? Well, like I say, I think the 16 new signings is, is a big thing. So there needs to be relationships made between strikers and wingers, sentiment feelers and wingers. You could see at times, you know, there was once or twice when Nico Williams was looking up and he seen a run going in behind and then he looked down to make the pass. He'd make the pass and the boy had come come to feet. So just little things like that takes a while to get a rapport. I think they had, they had 10 shots overall in the game uh, for us and only one of them was on target. So little things like that, just, you know, get the ball into decent areas. Don't try and be too don't try and pick out a person just pick out decent areas and get people into decent areas because like I say they were getting half decent balls into the box not quite picking people out and even second balls Spurs just managed to do enough all day didn't like you say didn't blow us away in the performance just did enough defensively and like I say Kane, Son, Kulisewski all not great today but they just managed to limp over the line Spurs which is, is a trait they didn't always have Obviously Steve Cooper is learning as well because I know he's had a, a, a great career so far. He became, I think he got his pro license when he was 27. Um, he went on to manage at underage level for the English team. Um, he then went on to Swansea, had you know decent enough success with them, got to a, got them into the playoffs and they ultimately didn't get promoted. He ends up with uh, Forrest then a couple of months later, t- takes them from the bottom of the championship table to a playoff final and gets them promoted. Perhaps um, a little bit ahead of time because I think they were planning it maybe a bit in the long term, but they're up there now. And I wonder, is he still learning lessons? Like maybe, for instance, not playing a lead striker today. Is that Was that a mistake by him, do you think, maybe? Uh, possibly. Given, like, hindsight's a great thing, given yeah. the way the game the game went. And Spurs were defending the width of the 18-yard box. So anything that was outside the 18-yard box, they were happy to let the ball go out there from a, a, forest, a forest attacking point of view. So when, when Forrest got into that, especially Toffolo put some decent balls in, they weren't coming out for, you know, uh, Emerson Royale wasn't coming out to engage in the 1v1. Perisic was doing a job on Nico Williams on the other side. But there was balls coming into the box. And had Oniwa been in there, I think he's a bit more of a, a, a focal point. But Gibbs, Lingard and Johnson, they were really, really good all day. Lots of mobility, moving, interchanging everywhere. You know, the uh, centre-halves don't know whether to stick or twist or, you know, what to do. So they did cause an awful lot of problems. But given the way the game developed, I think a, a, a focal point like an EWA would have been the better way to go. But listen, like I say, hindsight, you didn't know the game was going to go like that. The three were causing an awful lot of problems. But, you know, I think given uh, Steve Cooper's learning on the job, everything I've heard from him has been positive, you know. 
football is a very small world and you know when when people aren't liked in football it comes out pretty quickly oh, this, this fella's a bit you know whatever but everybody everybody you speak to about him said he's a, he's a brilliant man manager he has the players best interest at heart and he motivates people and you can see the feel good factor he lost 2-0 today but the city ground was absolutely bouncing from, <laughs> from minute 1 to minute 98 and even in the 97 minute Forrest the game is beyond them but they're pushing and pushing and pushing even to just get that goal and I think a lot of big teams this season will struggle to go to the city ground and actually get something. I'll just to ask you finally, but well, I might get your thoughts on um, whether they'll stay up or not or what's your kind of early feeling. But as well, in my preparation for this game, there's a lot of focus on especially the attacking players. But I, I was struck today as well by the, the central midfielders. Ryan Yates came in there because Mangala was injured. Uh, Lewis O'Brien playing beside him as well. Two players who don't have any Premier League experience they didn't look really out of place against Bentancur and Hoybier, two very, very experienced central midfielders. Yeah, two two lads who are just uh, just learning their way in the league against two two lads who know the league inside and out. Bentancur only fresh to it, but Hoiberg knows exactly what he's doing. And Hoiberg didn't have his best game today. Neither did uh, Bentancur. And I think uh, Yates and O'Brien in the middle, although they didn't do anything spectacular, they just kept the play ticking over, ticking over. And Spurs very rarely went through the the centre of Nottingham Forest. It was when they lost the ball. But I think these are the little dark arts of the game as well. O'Brien and Yates just need to have a word with each other. They both can't go at once. And sometimes they committed so much to the press that it just took Larice to chip the ball into Kane. And they were, it was 3v2 or 3v3. So just little things that they need to polish up on. But like I say, all the tools are there. And for two lads who haven't an awful lot of experience in the Premier League to come up against Hoiberg and Bentancourt, and I know, listen, people say, I was 2-0, Tottenham done their job. Mm. You, you need to really look at the game because there's an awful lot more to the game than the 2-0 scoreline. And yeah, like I say, it's it's hard to say that Steve Cooper will be coming away happy, but I think there's an awful lot of performances within the team that you can actually say, we just need more of that from you. And you'd give them a good chance of staying up then this season, would you? I do. I think, listen, I think Fulham, Fulham and Forrest are the ones that could the, possibly cause problems to the likes of an Everton, maybe even Southampton might drop in there. I think Bournemouth, from what I've seen, like mm. it's easy to say when you get we get beaten nine 0 from Liverpool, but I just haven't seen enough from Bournemouth yet to to convince me that they have a chance. I think Mitrovic, if he stays fit and keeps scoring goals for Fulham, they have a they have a chance. And if Forest play like they did today against half of the teams in the Premier League and play like they do at home for the majority of the season, I give them a decent chance of staying up. Yeah. Yeah big striker can be such a big difference for teams down around the bottom it's a a big game as well for Forest against Manchester City away and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll see and learn a lot more about them from that game but just looking at Tottenham Hotspur it is interesting I said it during the commentary to you Keith they haven't been convincing this season they really haven't played a full 90 minutes where you kind of thought yeah this is a Conte team that look ready to win titles but still they've got three wins in the draw they've got ten points on the board you can't argue with that well, that, that's it. That's exactly what I was saying before. You know, Spurs, we either need Kane, Son or Kulisevsky to turn up. Otherwise, they don't win. And it's as simple as that. Today, I know, know Kane scored two, but within the game itself, wasn't great. Kulisevsky, not great. Son, not great. But they just have that Conte spirit of just being able to force it through. And like I said, that that's a trait that champions have. You know, City weren't great against Palace for long periods of the game yesterday, but just managed to grind it over the line. And if Spurs can do that, you know, go to places and not particularly deserve to win, but come out with three points, they could find themselves there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Is there anything with that Tottenham team that you can kind of see that maybe just isn't functioning just right just yet? I, well, to be fair, today, Hoiberg and Ben Tancourt weren't great. I think there was a couple mm. of things they could have done, getting one two in the middle by Lingard once or twice. You know, Had Forrest been a little bit more clinical <clears throat> excuse me, in the final tour, it could have been a very, very different outcome. So, for the, <laughs> again, I go back to the scoreline, 2-0 to Spurs, but I do feel that Steve Cooper will be getting the, the, the laptop out on Monday morning and showing the lads a lot of good clips, and Conte will be taking the laptop out and saying, lads, we need to do better there. We will be punished by better teams in the Premier League. So there's just one or two little naive things. I do think Spurs were offering the first half, but like I said, didn't get punished. Just managed to do enough in the whole game to get over. But it's, it's a good trait to have to just be able to get over the line, even when your star lads aren't playing well. And you said just there, there or thereabouts, would you be convinced? And I think there is talk perhaps of Tottenham maybe signing one more player before the transfer window closes. But looking at that squad, do you think it's he's got the strength there to perhaps just maybe, well, I have to say Liverpool and City because they've been the top yeah. two, three of the last four seasons. Liverpool, 
we remains to be seen uh, how their season pans out. It hasn't got off to a great start. But do you think, you know, Arsenal are up there. Can Tottenham maybe get to the end of the season where they might have the Premier League title in their sights that they're at least competing for it? Well, I think that's the aim. I think that's the realistic aim. To say that Spurs could actually go on and win the se- win the league, I think is a little bit beyond them. I think mm. City and Liverpool just have that. They're a little bit ahead of everybody at the minute. Everybody's getting better. Spurs have got better. Arsenal have got better. Chelsea have got better. And I believe that Aubameyang are going to do, I'm sorry, Chelsea are going to do the Aubameyang deal, which will make Chelsea stronger again. Mm. So I, I honestly think the glass ceiling for anybody, unless your name is Manchester City or Liverpool, the glass ceiling is toured for you this year. And it might very well be Spurs get toured, but honestly, I think that's the best they can do given the gap between Liverpool and Manchester City so far. And as well, players who have experience now playing in Europe, in the Champions League, Europa League, whatever the case may be, in that Tottenham team, a lot of that kind of experience. And the group, while it's a tricky enough group, they've got Marseille Sporting uh, from Lisbon and also they've got uh, Eintracht Frankfurt, of course, Europa League winners from last season. It's the kind of group that Tottenham should be getting out of, whether it be top spot or second spot. And from there, who knows? Because uh, I'm sure the Tottenham supporters... If they weren't going to win the Premier League, they'd be quite happy to win the Champions League. Yeah, well, look, I, I do think they could have a decent run. I, I don't think Eintracht Frankfurt are much, up to much this season. They uh, didn't finish the season off off well. I know they, they won the Europa League over over Rangers, but they lost a couple of players. Didn't Costage look great. Is gone, yeah, yeah. yeah they they yeah. lost a couple of players. They, they really don't look to be competing this year. So I, I feel they, they should be able to dispatch Eintracht Frankfurt get six points out of that it's a group that they should get out of it's a group that when it was made Conte had said that could have been a lot worse so mm. they would they would be quietly confident that they get out of that, get out of that. and like you said a, a handy quarter final draw semi final draw and who knows but look I, I think the bread and butter for Tottenham is to just keep competing and the way Conte has them you see them running through brick walls and today like I said technically wasn't what wasn't great on the eye but I'd say the running stats were through the roof and that's what Conte will want and we should give some respect as well to Harry Kane today because he missed that penalty and showed the character to come back and score his second goal of the afternoon, his fourth of the season after four games. He's up there with Erling Holland, and now he's the third all-time scorer in the Premier League list, getting ahead of Andrew Cole, formerly of Newcastle and Manchester United, and just behind Wayne Rooney, who he probably will overtake in his career. I'm not sure if he'll catch Shearer's 260, but who knows? What makes Harry Kane such a brilliant striker? What has made him such a brilliant striker over the last decade or whatever? Well, I think it's his mentality. When you look at when he was a young lad, didn't really make the grade in terms of Premier League football, got thrown around on loan to League Two, League One, Championship football, and all of a sudden the penny just seemed to drop him. I think it was Tim Sherwood giving him his, uh, giving him his chance in a sports jersey, and he just seemed to grasp it. And I do think sometimes players that, you know, when you're, when you're in these big academies, you need to come away and you need to get your eyes open to what you know, how privileged you actually are. And with Kane going and doing it the hard way, I think he realises that, you know, the things he has around him, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the new training ground, all the new lads, Perisic, Basuma coming in. I think he realises that this is a club on the up at the minute and he's the forefront of it. You know, Conte, when he came in the door, he said, Kane's going nowhere, we're keeping Kane, he wants to keep him. And when you have when you have somebody like Conte, such a big personality comes in and he says, "No, you're the main man. You're my captain. You're the you're the boy I want to bring us forward." It just makes you feel ten feet tall. And look, I, I think Kane he has everything he does. If he was if he was a little bit pacier, I think he he'd be really up there with it. With you know some of the best players in the world. He's an outstanding finisher. You see every second goal today, just hanging at the back post. And initially, when he puts it in, you're thinking he must be offside because he's in that much space. But he just knows where to be in the right times. And again, didn't play particularly well, but hits the back of the net twice. And I should just say, uh, before we finish, I want to talk to you about Arsenal because Arsenal are top of the table 30 days, so we won't get carried away <laughs> positions just yet, Keith. But they've got 12 points from 12. They showed real character yesterday, which is something maybe that's been lacking from Arsenal teams over the last decade. They showed character to come from behind against a really good Fulham team. This Fulham team, I think some people are maybe underestimating. They're they're well organised. They've got a great striker in Mitrovic and a good manager there in Marco Silva. But Arsenal came from behind to win that game by two goals to one. They've signed really well. They got the likes of Gabriel Jesus. Inchenko, I know, was out yesterday. But they're winners. They've won Premier League title with Manchester City. And they bring Saliba back as well. He seems to be forming a good relationship there with uh, Gabriel. They've got Tierney on the left-hand side. It could be good with Zinchenko in there. Chak has got great experience. And Jesus just looks like a, a new man there because he is the main man as well for Arsenal, just in the same way Harry Kane is for Tottenham. So how far can this Arsenal team go? I'm, I'm not too sure. It remains to be seen. Look, I think Arsenal 
Dave obviously improves. Zinchenko, I think, will be a great sign. And obviously, Jesus is doing his thing. Everybody knows how good he is, given what he's done at City. But is he the man who can score 20 goals a season? It looks at the minute he can be. If he can do that, I think that will kick Arsenal on to the next level. And I think the Kieran and Thierry one is, is very interesting because I think when he's fit, he will be the number one left back. And that, for me, brings Zinchenko into the deep line midfielder, which he plays for Ukraine. And to me, the only question mark over me is Shaka. You know, he, he's... He's susceptible to the, the odd red card, doing the odd silly thing. And I think if Arsenal can replace him, there was rumours of a Tillemans or somebody of that ill coming in. But even as Zinchenko, if he plays in there more often than not, I think Arsenal will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. But the reason I, I wouldn't be fully confident in it is because, you know, you've the likes of Odegaard, Saka, uh, Smith Rowe, a lot, a lot of young players. And with young players, that, that comes inconsistency. You know, it takes Odegaard will probably get a hamstring tear at some point this season. The same with, with Saka. So you can't really bank on these lads because they're so young and with youth comes inconsistency. So I do think they'll have a couple of weeks where they're just off the boil and City will just go away, Liverpool will go away. I just hope Spurs come off the boil with Europe and the World Cup. You know, There's an awful lot of variables to what can happen yeah. in the season. I think we'll know an awful lot more when the World Cup finishes you know, regarding who's fit, who's injured and who's still in decent form.